I assume that my audio is fine and that anybody who is here can hear. So let's uh, go catch up on some stuff, which does not involve blasting the hell out of that thing for no reason. I'll talk to him later. But, um, so up in the Undead Parish, not the Undead Parish, the Undead Burg, there is an item that I've been meaning to pick up for ages and ages and ages and constantly forgetting. It's also kind of fun to go back to the starting area of the game and just absolutely explode the hell out of these guys. Uh, I think I just heard the new follower noise, so if that is a new follower, hi, welcome. Uh, unless you are, of course, a horrible bot, in which case, goodbye. Where the hell is... there's another guy. I don't need to kill him, I don't need to fight any of these guys. So, uh, yeah, in all this time, we've made our way so far through this game, and I've forgotten constantly to go back and buy the basic inventory item, which is the... Uh, the bottomless box, which lets us store things at bonfires instead of carrying everything constantly in our inventory always and forever. So I haven't realised this, but as a thrusting weapon you can actually use your rapier with your shield raised. You can only do that with thrusting weapons and I just forgot that uh, it's not tied to spears, it's tied to the thrusting type. Which means we can just poke. Gently prod things until they die. Not that it's necessary with the vast damage output that we actually have, but... Um, you know, no reason to take risks. Or I guess reason to take risks, technically, if you think about it. Anyway, all we want to do is come down here and talk to the undead merchant, who I don't believe we murdered. Although we could... Hmm. Vaguely tempting. We could we could pick up that thread. Ah, where have you been hiding? I guess you popped the twig for certain. Ah, change my mind. <laughs> nice laugh. Always nice to hear that. <laughs> Good to see you. So finally, 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 I can pick this stuff up. Which means I can finally do some inventory management at long goddamn last. Does he have anything else I actually want? I don't believe so. Nice here, you know. The hollows don't care for a skinny old twig like me. I've got you here. And nobody pelts me with stones anymore. You're undead. But you know how it is. I was treated worse back at home. This guy straight up has more dialogue than I ever remembered. Yeah, my wares? Of course they're stolen. What did you think? And when you lose your head, I've said it all again. <laughs> <laughs> I straight up didn't, don't remember any of this conversation. I must have talked to this guy at some point in the hundreds of hours I've played this game, but... Oh, this one. Ain't she lovely? Her name is Yulia. She's plumb in love with me. You'd never leave my side now, would you, Yulia? Jesus, maybe he is talking about the bathtub. I can see why people think that he's in love with his bathtub. I mean, he probably is supposed to be talking about his sword, but Jesus Christ. Or I guess, like, Great Lord Gwyn. Inventory management. I love to manage inventory. It's fun for a thing to do before the stream starts our story. Another impromptu rhymes, which are probably better. I think I went far enough that these guys will have respawned. Yeah, there they are. <laughs> That's not supposed to happen. I'm very definitely not supposed to be able to land on that weird out outcropping. But for anyone who's just shown up, we're just running around doing a little bit of stuff before we get started on the stream proper. I've picked up the bottomless box finally, which means I can drop off all the shit I've been carrying this entire time, which might take a minute or two. I wish people wouldn't leave messages on bonfires. They do it so that you read the message instead of going in the bonfire. 
Right, what do we absolutely not need to be carrying around? Uh, well, this. I might sell all this stuff as well just to get rid of it. Because I'm, nev I'm never going to use some of these things. Uh, we will be needing that, ironically. I think I'll sell most of this. Uh, okay, don't need that. I'll hang on to that. Don't need that, don't need that, don't need that, don't need that, don't need... Well, I mean, I've got tons of these, but they're only worth, like, one soul, so I guess I'll keep them for some reason. Uh, don't need these. I might need that. Don't need any of this. I'll hang on to that one. Don't need this, don't need these, don't need... Definitely need that. Don't need this, 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 don't need this. Don't need this, don't need this, don't need this, don't need this, don't need this. Don't get into hoarding, it's a terrible, terrible habit. Um, oh, I should upgrade my longbow. Light crossbow, heavy crossbow, sorcerer's catalyst, demon catalyst, isolith catalyst, tin banishment catalyst, tin crystallization catalyst. It's all irrelevant. Oh, this is garbage, this is religious stuff, we don't care about that. We're a secular spellcaster. Don't need any of these. It's worth keeping a, a few of the different shields around, though. Don't need this one, don't need this one, don't need this one. Don't need this one, or that one. Might need that one. This one's magic resistance, this one's fire resistance. Those might come in handy. Don't need these, don't need that. That's all of those. And then we'll do the same for all of these. Also, it's interesting that I clearly have Solaire's equipment, because... Um, I mean, I might come back and, in between streams, try and figure out a, a better loadout for my stuff. But we got Soler's equipment, but we definitely did not get the, the Shining Maggot thing. Which is weird, we should have. Uh, we should have that. When uh, As part of the same drop, we should have got it, so I don't know where it went or why we don't have it. But it's irritating and going to be a bit of a pain. All things considered. Alright, that's everything. Oh, here's an interesting fact. I have just alt-tabbed out to check my stream manager, and yeah, the one on my phone is completely busted, as is occasionally the case, apparently. I haven't seen any of these messages people have sent. <laughs> okay, it seems to be working now. That's weird. I don't know why that didn't connect properly. I've just been sitting here with the stream manager on my phone being like, Oh, hey, that's my hat. That guy has my hat. That guy's wearing... The same outfit and the hat I want. What the fuck? Come back. Ghost. Ahoy, hello. And also hello everybody who I did not respond to in messages because I didn't see. So for the next section, we'll be heading either to the catacombs, which is usually what I will take first, or to the uh, horrible undead place of New Londo, which I usually leave for last. But before we do that, we're going to go level some things up at the blacksmith. Which is not strictly necessary, but it's always worth doing. We might be able to level up an item into a blessed item at the uh, at, at Andre's folksy down home weapon storage facility, which will make life a bit easier in the catacombs. But um, if I can't manage that, I won't bother. I'm not putting points into faith so that we can wield the Astora sword. That's just really not viable at this stage where it's costing us about 30,000 souls to level up. I love these guys because they're so confident all the time, you know. Even through the shield I can do most of his health. It's very, uh, if you come for the, if you take a swing at the king you better not miss, etc, you know. Just an arrow shaft sticking out of my face. They probably sound terrible in real life. I bet they haven't been uh, oiled in a century or so. It's probably really rusty and squeaky and horrible. Just like me. Andre, me old mucker, how are you doing? Long time no see. Oh really? You haven't? How embarrassing. Spell. I sense great potential 
Andrew's kind of a divine blacksmith to some extent, because he's definitely associated with Anor Londo, and he uh, knows how to use the divine ember and that kind of stuff. So it's interesting that he's very fascinated by the the evil ember, but he, he never really... There's no kind of plot chain the way there are with some NPCs, for example. What do we need for... Yeah, it does not say what we need. Uh, we've got a zillion souls now, though, so we can just afford to level things up. Um, we can just buy a ton of Titanite shards. I should Oh, I should buy the Crest of Artorias while I'm here so I don't forget, so, which means I should probably pop some souls. Which really is a lot more convenient now that they've added the ability to pop multiple. But you can still only pop one of each, pop each kind at a time. You can't really use multiple different types, which still means some waiting. That should be plenty. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, well, you know, uh, we don't need the the magic ember. It's not your not your scene. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Tie tonight. Gonna buy some tie tonight, tonight. Tonight, a night, tonight with Titan Knight. So if I put that longsword to plus five, I think we can make it blessed. I only have this enchanted thing because it has intelligence scaling, because that's what the enchantment does. There's a few of these items in the game that aren't that are um, generic items that have the generic upgrades on them rather than being unique. Modify. Oh, I can. I, uh, lightning's. Pro I usually get lightning or fire on my longbow, so let's get the longbow up to plus ten so that we can make it be fire later. Since we're going to the fireplace soon anyway. Might need to buy some more sh uh, large shards, which we can do in Anor Londo relatively easily. Uh, we need three of them, so that's probably what I'll, what I'll do in that case. Oh, I never actually upgraded the Grass Crest Shield. I don't think upgrading the shield actually increases its the amount of resistance it gets, but it does increase the stability, so it's still worth doing. So let's get... Uh, do I have enough? Let's get the Longsword to plus five so we can make it divine. We need some more shards. There is a point at which the limitations on um, upgrading your equipment just stop being a thing. Uh, you can buy the resources to get something to plus 14, I think. Um, the only kind you can't buy... I, I, might, I might be wrong about that, but I think the only kind you can't buy is the Titanite slabs that unlock the very top level. So, Divine Longsword, that's what we want. We should be able to reinforce it a bit more as well. Uh, green Titanite. I think green Titanite upgrade to lightning as well. Um, but let's get it to plus five, I guess, just so that we don't ever have to worry about this stuff ever again. Um, we can definitely buy green Titanite in Anor Londo as well, so it's not an issue. Money is no object. Oh, that's fair. I can always just go farm some off stream, you know. What is it Minecraft YouTubers say? I did some building off stream. Oh, I could I have I could probably have just warped here. I didn't need to didn't need to walk all this way. But if we can't buy chunks, that still means that we can buy most of what we need. I think you only need chunks for the last couple steps. So now that we're all uh all equipped. And I finally put all my shit in the magic box. It's time. Actually, let's become a human. It's time to go to the catacombs, which I don't want to go to because I don't have the requisite uh, headpiece. I really don't know why I don't have it. I have all of the other stuff that Solaire drops, so he should have dropped that as well. And I just I don't know why it's not in my inventory. Regardless, it's time to jog on. I don't need to talk to this guy. I don't want to talk to this guy. I'm just going to leave. You know, you can just ollie out. You don't have to go to the share zone. Oh, that's right. I should probably actually equip my anti-undead sword. 
18.1's too much, let's drop that down, that's much better. Also, I don't need to be wearing the orange charred ring anymore, I will never ever wear that again. Um, it's really only useful in that one zone for that little bit. So the reason why I want the um, Divine Longsword is that in this next zone, there's going to be a lot of skeletons who eternally respawn. Not when you rest at bonfires, but constantly. Which is... Oh, okay. That's less of an issue than it used to be. Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. But uh, I, I grabbed that item, I think. I didn't do my usual run through of the graveyard to grab all of the items here, which actually means we've been playing through the, through the game without a certain item that's extremely useful for Let's Plays and stuff, which is the binoculars, which will let us get a, a look at stuff. Um, but yeah, so when we get into this area proper, there will be necromancers constantly resurrecting all these skeleton guys, which will be frustrating, to say the least. When you kill the necromancers, they stop resurrecting, and the necromancers themselves never respawn. But um, you know, I never saw a, I never saw a soul I couldn't dark. You know, I never saw a, a fight I couldn't avoid. Case in point, you know, being a sorcerer is kind of the art of not having to deal with some someone else's bullshit. Ha 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 ha, I was so scared of you guys, but now, now you are nothing. Did I grab, is, there's definitely something around here. I think I grabbed that one. I ran around and grabbed a couple things at the start of this. I think I got a better shield. Red and white surround shield. These guys drop those, I think. So here we have the Zweihander, which is a very good strength weapon if you're going strength, but we aren't. Yeah, I mean, um, the remaster's probably recording at a higher... Res like, streaming, this should be at, like, 720p, I think, because that's what my... That's, like, the most common streaming resolution. Most people do 720p. But, uh, yeah, the remaster, as far as I can tell, it looks exactly the same as the original game does in your memory. Like, all of the models, all of the textures, it's all exactly the same. It's just HD now. I'm going to call these guys Jiggly Bones now. Like in, uh, like Super Mario has dry bones. Dark Souls has Jiggly Bones. I imagine skeletons would be very offended by this idea. Everyone loves the Jiggly Wiggly Skellingtons. And it'll happen to you too if you don't drink your milk. Some kind of horrible osteoporotic nightmare down here. Also floating heads, which are fun. They're more useful for killing these things than they are for killing me, frankly. You good, buddy? Don't lose your head. Any ordinary damage, except for falling damage, will result in these things resurrecting. So you can actually knock it, knock them down holes pretty effectively. But the most important thing is to make sure that stuff doesn't follow you. This is a rule everywhere in Dark, Soul, Dark Souls. Make sure everything dies. Because if you don't, it'll sneak up behind you. And then when you're fighting something else... Um... Bye. But yeah, so it's actually possible to get through this area without a, a blessed weapon. You can sprint past the skeletons, but it's risky. Uh, kill the necromancer and then and then redo each each area backwards, I guess. But um, instead of doing that, you can also... I definitely hear some, someone fighting a wall, I guess. <laughs> but instead of doing that, you can fight them with uh, a blessed weapon, or you can find ways to kick every single skeleton off a cliff, since they... they I mean, I guess they, maybe they do respawn. No, you get the souls, so I guess they don't respawn. Didn't drink your milk. Wiggly soft bones, dry bones. They got it all down here. Come to the catacombs. It's dark. It's safe. It's restful. It's full of skeletons. 
And it's just $17.99 for a two-night stay. So I think the first Necromancer is down here. There he is, the jammy bastard. They do a shit ton of damage because they do fire damage, which we have very little resistance to. So they can be kind of risky, but it's fine. Uh, the Skull Lantern it drops is necessary for the next area. There is a random chance that any individual Necromancer will drop one as loot, but if none of them do, then it triggers the final Necromancer to always drop one. So let's uh, let's pop a Humanity and uh, make sure our Estus is topped up. I've got so much Humanity at this point that I might as well level up all of these bonfires as we go. This area can be a bit frustrating, less so if you do have the a Divine Weapon. But because of that, it's just easier. Also, I do love these. They're actually moving very slowly. This army of, of tomb beetles up the wall. So these guys do come back when you rest at a bonfire, but they will stop it constantly returning during the fights uh, if you kill the necromancer, so that's good. Then again, that's not a problem for us. As I've already said, I'm now repeating myself, but that's fine too. <gasps> parry! Who granted you this power? As if I didn't actually get parried, like, what, five minutes ago? I'm a sorcerer. I'm not supposed to be doing this. I'm supposed to be killing people with magic. This is unusual to me. That guy normally does not aggro. Also, um, it's just very easy to shoot him like this. The original game was a lot darker, but you could see his eyes glowing to sight on him in the head and just take care of him. So you didn't have to worry about these ones respawning. Now that we've actually upgraded our longbow, we can kill stuff with it. It's uh, finally a viable weapon rather than just being a tool for repositioning things. Although we will still primarily be using it to reposition things, especially in this area, because, oh boy... This is second only to Blight Town in terms of um, places you can get NPCs to fucking hurl themselves into the abyss. So if I'm lucky, one of these guys will throw himself off the edge, which they have a fun habit of doing if you stand here. You never tell if it's going to be the rolling attack or the, the spinning helicopter attack that they like, because as we all know, skeletons are not subject to the laws of... Um, Laws of reality. They have completely, uh, they have completely frictionless um, bearings in their joints because they're animated by magic, which is why the skeleton helicopter is such an effective tool, or skelicopter, if you will. I do want to parry these guys. I'm just like aware that they're not very difficult to fight right now, so it's just easier to spam attacks. Anyway, these guys will throw themselves into the, the abyss for. No particular reason. Although they seem to have got themselves stuck on something. I think they're on there. I definitely can hear them moving. Well, the thing about the pristine bun is that it's uh, it itself is undead. The advantage to um, undead hair care is that um, it just stays like that. Every time you rest at a bonfire, it resets just like everything else, so your bun gets uh, completely fixed. I normally take this a lot more a lot more slowly, but we've leveled up enough that it's not really a problem. Uh, we can just kind of flail on these guys and kill them. It's not exactly the world's most um, complex task anymore, as it is sometimes. But yeah, so um, if we came here early in the game, they would be tough, but we didn't, so these guys are boned. But we fell through the floor for a second. I remember on my single one only playthrough of Dark Souls 2, I was really stressed about being human as much as possible because back when I used to play Dark Souls 1 all the time, I played it in hollow mode all of the time because I was paranoid about getting invaded. Um, and I used to be anxious about things. I'm mostly not anymore, apart from the horrible impending doom that we all face. But... Um, because of that, I played through Dark Souls 1 mostly not not being in human mode. 
Um, but I found that I just had so much trouble with it that I, I ended up having to spend a lot of time because I didn't have enough human effigies. It's also interesting the difference between humanity and human effigies. It's one of those other things that I think is more strongly representational of the fact that Dark Souls 2 does not take place in the same world or the same continuity, really. It's just a whole other thing that's happening. I mean, that game explicitly starts with you diving into a uh, imaginary, like, liminal realm. You explicitly go to a kind of a, a non-real world in it. And yet still people will be like, oh, this guy's Gwyn. Like, no, he's not. But you know what they say, you Gwyn some, you lose some. Which I'm sure, I, I'm sure I've used that before. Also, if that was a real new follower, welcome. If that was a bot, um, fuck off, I guess. But, you know, bot's gonna bot. Did I miss it? I feel like I've missed an item, which is completely unacceptable to my fucking kleptomaniac tendencies. Have to hoard, have to fill my magic box with all of the items. I'm not even going to comment on the Lucerne Hammer again, uh, again this time because I, in my old Let's Play I just went on and on about that for like five whole minutes about how can you have a Lucerne Hammer in a setting that doesn't have a Lucerne, you know? If there's no Germany, how do you have this? Which was a joke, but is still kind of a thing. Did they stay dead? It, if they die of explosion, they're supposed to come back, I think. I've definitely seen them come back from dying from explosion before. So we need to flip this shelf over. If we come here early... Ouch. Oh yeah, there's traps here, by the way, in case you didn't know. If you look closely, you can tell because they have three little holes on the front of them, which this one doesn't, so it's not a trap. I should parry one of these guys at some point. Just to make a point. Uh, but yeah, so if you come here earlier in the game, you meet Patches for the first time up here. And he... Uh, Patches is one of the... I mean, it can be in Switzerland, it can be in Germany. I'm not... I'm not, I'm not a geographer. Let's, let's be real. I, uh, I failed my geography. Actually, no, I got like a D in my geography A level. I didn't fail it. I failed the other two. But um, maybe you should loosen up, huh? Huh? Did you consider that? Anyway, that flips this over. This is where you... Uh, the stuff that was taught in my geography classes was a lot of stuff about how, like... Um, like, how to fight skeletons. There was a, there was a whole... Um, there was a whole subchapter on, on dungeon design that was interesting. Interesting thing to focus on. Um, in seriousness, it was on it, my geography classes were on like actual proper modern geography, like uh, all of the various things you need to know for like geological planning and and city stuff. There was a lot of ecology. There was a lot of stuff on like geopolitics, um, and a lot of stuff on just like geological systems, like longshore drift and oxbow lakes and other such things. Uh, secret zone, by the way, guys. Secret zone. There was only a little bit on urban planning. It was more about, like, how cities function as a part of the world and how international trade functions and all this other stuff. Yeah, but what level did you study it at? The A-levels are, like, the special... Like, like the intermediary courses between high school and college... Uh, high school and university, so... Um... That's where we went. I think I, I, think I got everything down there. I think it was on the geography... I think the geography school trip was the only school trip I ever went on. Um, actually, no, there might have been a secondary school day trip to France. Meander's a really good word. So that's going to spike me if I get too close. Um, I think there's another necromancer around here to kill somewhere. See if I can parry this one. 
See if I can finally parry one of these guys. They're actually pretty easy to parry. They have nice big windows on their swings. <sighs> I'm just used to coming... I'm used to coming to this zone as, like, the first thing I do. Or maybe the second thing I do after the Undead Parish. Which means I've developed a healthy fear of um, getting skeletoned. And you should always avoid getting skeletoned if you can. Like, some people think it's pretty funny when you fuck it up, but I don't find it humorous. I think these ones with the only the big Falchions are actually more dangerous than the smaller guys. Yeah, that kind of thing is really common. Um, I think it's even more common in America than, than here, just because the, the whole kind of build for standardized testing thing is even more of a problem with you guys. You don't actually learn anything because it's useful. Oh, fuck. Uh, that's going to kill me. You don't learn things for learning them. You don't learn things even for the course that it is, really. You just... You learn the thing that... Um, that's you get good scores on the tests because the schools need the money that they get for getting good tests. Because everything in America is just fucking terrible. Although I think they do also do... Um, I, I don't need to deal with you today. I'm just going to leave. Bye. We can fuck off out of the share zone. There's the skeleton. I mean, the <laughs> I mean, uh, they're all skeletons. Here are several skeletons, but there's the helicopter or skelicopter, if you will. I wonder, if I, I wonder how many of these I can dodge. Can I just get past all of them? A kind of a gently clattering, splintering army following me through this zone. I feel like I'm in a Harryhausen movie. Oh shit, I forgot about these ones. That's not- that's more than I really want to fight right now. I wonder if they will- ow, yes, apparently. <laughs> will they leave me alone if I come down here? Let's see if I can actually catch this other- Oh no, he got away. That one starts to despawn, I think, as soon as you drop down from the, the above. So, unfortunately, that magic turtle got away. Its uh, delicious shell will be applied to future weapons in the future. Oh, uh, also, fun fact. You can just about sometimes see the, the water from the waterfall on the other side of here clipping through. Uh... Ah, uh, game design. Ah, uh, CG. Ah. Uh. Oh, ho, ho, it's so funny. This guy has no idea. Oh, wait, yes, he does. Oh, too early. See how you like it. I should really have learned, like, the proper bonum clature, I guess. That was a bit of a stretch. Look, see, there's all the guys. Look, see. Ha, <laughs> see. They passed around there to try and catch me, and now they can't path back over here. Dumb skeletons. Got no brains in your head, just an empty skull. Bunch of dipshits. Oh, shit, I'm out of arrows. Okay, well, I don't think... Actually, hmm... Actually, it straight up might be worth going back and buying arrows. I really do actually need a bunch of arrows. Can we... You're in my way. I might go back and find a vendor and just buy about 800 arrows and then be set for the rest of the game. I usually make a habit of doing this, but um, I forgot this time. Get thee gone. If I continue on to a future bond, I can't remember which of the bonfires in this area we can teleport to or from, so I'm just gonna... Uh, I'm just gonna ollie out you back upstairs. I think the fastest way to go... Well, the fastest way to go would be to use a uh, homeward bone and then teleport from that bonfire. 
but we're not too far. There's definitely one in the catacombs I think that can be warped to, but I don't know which one. I think it might be the one at the uh, the waterfall. I might. I mean, I might be wrong about that overall, but I'm just. I I think there's one somewhere. What's the easiest? Uh, probably. Um, probably easiest to go by from Andre. I think. Did I miss the bonfire here? I was going to use the bonfire to get out, but I think I went past it. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of bell ringing in Dark Souls. Ho ho ho. Oh, this, that's not good. I'm sandwiched. Very crunchy sandwich. It's a shame I'm short on skeleton puns. There's a few you can do with skeleton, and that's basically like a humorous, but, but you know, I've burnt those. I don't really have any more. I know this sounds like the build-up to another pun, but I straight up am out. What is Skeleton's favourite uh, band? Boney M. Why did the Skeleton... Uh, why was the Skeleton... Why did he not go to the party? Because he had no body to go with. Um, Jesus, are there even any more skeleton jokes? Yeah, that's it. That's all of the skeleton jokes. All of the skeleton jokes that exist in the English language. A bunch of you guys speak other languages, though. Does anyone know any foreign language but skeleton jokes? Hey, nice. And I know you can I know you can be a bit irritated by all the skeleton puns and all the jokes and everything, but I'll appreciate it if you don't take that skeleton with me. That's so tenuous. That's such a stretch. I think video games have a good line in fun skeletons to fight. I always enjoy whenever there's a good skeleton in a video game. I think that um I think Oblivion has some of my favourites, because they also do the um the Dark Souls Folia party thing. Except that unlike Dark Souls, they don't bust into 15 different pieces that go everywhere. Which is, you know, the FromSoft staple. Every time you smash something in Dark Souls, it goes all over the place. Makes a huge mess. Um, but in Oblivion, their arms come off and their head comes off, but all of the rest of it stays stuck together. Which is just kind of really amusing to me. Until you, I think... No, even if you kill it, that happens. I have like five embers he's never seen before. I have embers you've never even heard of, bro. Like, maybe you should get out of this tower sometime. Like, how much can you really advance your skills when you're just chilling here? You never even heard of a heard of an occult ember? Like, come on, you're so behind the times. I mean, I'm not sure if you're joking, but I think they actually did model all of the- not all of the skeleton bits, but all of the actual, like, chunks that come off when you kill a skeleton in this game are individual bits that do go around and get all over the place. They are- they do have their own different collision meshes and things. Blaspheme is pretty good. How many arrows will you give me now? 500, that's more like it. It's not really enough, we'll probably have to pick up some more later, but I can't be bothered to pop any more souls. Clever Dark Souls trick, one of the best ways to figure out- wait, hang on. Shit, really? Did I rest at this bonfire? I'm, in f I'm a fool. I'm an idiot. Um, the clever trick with the Dark Souls travel is to uh, rest at the bonfire you want to come back to and then go where you're going and then teleport back to that bonfire. Unless you can just go there directly with the, the bonfire warp itself, but since that's highly limited, it's a bit of a pain. Uh, 
Oh, jeez. I always forget about that slippy bit. So what you like about Dark Souls is it's a very slippery game. Just absolutely dripping in lube. You'd think skeletons would be quite dry, but no. They'll, uh, they'll zip off the edge like anybody's business. As you can see. Perfect comic timing for whatever the fuck it was that died behind me at any rate. It's nice that we're just fighting the, the ordinary sized skeletons. Later on there'll be some that are quite skeletal. Skeletons of them. I could have gone with that. Oh well. I wonder if anyone actually has a fetish for skeletons. See, I'm not... I'm glad I'm not alone in this opinion, but like, zombies are so, like... So, so, so oversaturated. Not just with viscera and fluids and, 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 and separating humours and so on, but like, culturally, zombies are over oversaturated. There's just too many zombies. And I find that infuriating as someone who has an appreciation for, like, rubbish 80s fantasy art. Show me a good skeleton. And even then, I think there's a high degree of, like, difference between a good skeleton and a bad skeleton. I'm really disappointed with the new um, Games Workshop skeleton sculpts because uh, they've um, updated the skeleton warriors for like the second time in a decade and I actually really liked the old ones. They had a very kind of Conan kind of like Mounds of the Ancient Barbarian Kings vibe which is I think more appropriate to a skeleton horde than a like organized kind of military unit, which is what they look like now. Um, they look like they're all from the same same unit. It looks like a bunch of soldiers who died together and then were resurrected together all wearing the same uniform, which is not not really the vibe you want for a, a necromancer. You, what you want is um, just an absolute shit ton of skeletons from all over the place. You see, we completely agree. I wonder if you can parry that roly poly attack. Scale Eaton's pretty good as well. Time for another speedrun tactic. By which I mean just fucking running. Don't mind me, just passing through. I'm just a visitor to your fair land. It's not an issue. Let's just let me go. It's fine. I'm not smuggling anything. Just let me, let me get out of here. It's all fine. It's all good. We're all, we're all friends here. You guys, you guys good? Well, that ain't parryable. I can just yoke himself into the abyss. I like this, I like this, uh, this chain reaction I've caused. Let's see if we can catch this uh, magic turtle this time. There he is. Ouch. Laser, 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 yes, fantastic. Never doubt the might of a sorcerer, you can really do anything. Climbing ladders, climbing ladders, singing the climbing ladder song. Oh, I can probably actually just laser these guys to death because I killed all the necromancers. No, they're not skeletons ettins because they don't have two heads, and ettin has two heads. As that folklorish special interest for you. So that should knock those guys in the hole. Or just explode them, I guess. I actually really like the animation of the skeletons when they get hit by a proper explosion. They sort of bodily get flung around. It's really great. Which 
It's strange because you think that um, if anything is should be resistant to the like pressure wave of an of an explosion, a creature made out of bones really ought to be. There's not much for it to push against, you know. Although I suppose on the other side, other side they don't have much like ballast to them because of all of the, you know, the bone thing. Ah, uh, to be a, a necromancer in a in a tomb in a video game from 1994. Actually, I've been really tempted recently to stream old games. I think I might do that for a bit at some point. Not just my vaguely intended Morrowind stream, which I do want to do at some point, but also a... Uh, did I get everything that was in there? I think I did. Well, like, there's a whole bunch that I'm vaguely interested in, but I have a personal fondness for the old Might and Magic games. Um... Both the uh, turn-based strategy games of uh, Heroes of Might and Magic, but also the actual uh, RPGs, the Might and Magic games. But there's a bunch of other stuff from around that time and older that I do love very much. I just... I've played so many games over the years. Just, you would not believe how many games I've played. Oh, it's almost a shame that I didn't do something more useful with my life, really. Instead of this, apparently. Now, it's very tempting to drop down there and get that item, but I'm not going to do it, because on the at the bottom of there is a, uh, a zone which is full of just an astonishing number of skeleton wheels, and we've already seen how much trouble skeleton wheels are and how little we want to fight them. So instead of that, um, we'll be we'll get on our bike and I'll, we'll go do something else. I might go down there a bit later, but um, it's going to be <laughs> after I unlock the uh, the second bonfire in this area, which should be around here somewhere. Because, yeah, it's just up here. Because, if you go down there, uh, you can open a shortcut, which is good. And you can find the guy who enchants things with fire, which is also good. But he also, combo and harvesters is great, I like that. But he also has a uh, extremely frustrating addition in the remastered version. One of the only changes between remastered and uh, the classic Dark Souls experience is I didn't need to pop that. These guys have dropped like three, like three humanity this whole time. Um, is that uh, they added a bonfire to Vamos's hole, which means that you can go go there and then you rest at the bonfire instinctively because of video games. And if you haven't got the Lord Vessel placed yet, then you can't warp back out. And you can't homeward bone out because you just rested at the bonfire, which means the only way out is to fight your way through the skeleton wheels. Which, if you come here early in the game, it's just fucking impossible. I literally, I have an abandoned character on this, uh, on this account, which was just because I went there and I got fucking stuck. And it was straight up impossible to get past. I think, where's the switch for, oh hi, uh, the fuck did you come from? Where did you come from? Where did you go? What happened to you, Skeleton Joe? Anyway, so uh, we need to flip this, but I can't remember where the switch is. I mean, that's not actually a pun. The word bonfire just comes from bone fire. It's a fire. A bonfire is a fire hot enough to, to burn something to the bones. Oh, right, the ladder. I missed the ladder, of course. See, this is so much more convenient than playing by myself. But uh, I've been thinking about dipping into old games generally, actually. I've, I've been meaning to... Um... Oh, right. See, I just straight up misread that. This is what happens when you're staring at your phone propped in front of your computer screen rather than actually having a proper streaming setup. But, uh, right, so that's gone flippy, that's that. You know, actually, hang on, I've rested at that bonfire, which is right here, which means that that's where we'll go to when we homeward bone, which means that this is actually the most sensible place, the most sensible time for us to go visit Vamos down in his, down in his hole, his skeleton pit. But some of the other things I've been thinking about streaming sometime soon are the original Deus Ex, the original Thief, uh, maybe a boomer shooter or two. Just fun old stuff that I like from old timey times because I'm old. So what we need to do is land on this, which we did, and land on this, which we also have did. I think that's where we need to aim next so that we don't go straight down the hole. 
Oh, that's just an ordinary skeleton. Um, if you drop straight down the hole, you might die. <laughs> I guess technically now that I am paid for this to some slight extent. Oh, hang on, no. Legally, I'm not. I'm not paid to stream or make let's plays. Legally, I'm. Some people give me donations just for funsies. I like Vamos because he's a very large dwarf. He's the only dwarf in the original Dark Souls, and you can tell that because he's kind of dwarf shaped, and also he's got. Uh, a beard. A skeleton beard. A bone beard. Do you trim that? Does it grow? Is that some kind of elaborate face piece you've chosen to put on there? Also, this is just fucking rad. I love the idea of him using these um, caskets as forges. That's just such a fun, like, element to the design. Is that incorrect? The large flame ember is from the Demon Ruins, not from New Londo. I wonder if they changed the position of it when they released the game. Because, um, much as I love FromSoft, they do have this weird kind of habit where before <laughs> a few months before finalizing the game's design, they suddenly remix anything. There's a, there's a, everything. There's a bunch of, um, like places in, uh, Bloodborne that are repositioned from where they should be inexplicably. And in earlier designs, you can um, you can see the way that, oh, this boss was supposed to be in this area, which is why they have a similar aesthetic. And for some reason, they repositioned it right uh, at that point. Oh, we don't have very many green titanite shards. That's a shame. Oh, wait, no, we spent them all on our fucking sword like an idiot that we'll never use again. But I do love, I do love the Vemos mic. I think that it's probably because, well, if you're a skeleton, you don't have a tongue, so how are you going to talk? What he does is he has a voice actor in another room who is, who is paid to read lines, and he's got a, a little uh, speaker in his brain. I mean, what are you going to use a skull for if you're, if you're a, a skeleton? It's not like you've got a brain in there. Oh, he only sells shards. I thought he sold something more. Do I not have that? He's not very nice, really. Anyway, we should be able to get back up pretty easily. I I can think I can light this and then homeward bone. It's only if I rest at this that it's a problem. Although I'm not really sure what the point of lighting it in that case is, now that I think about it. I think I'm running low on homeward bones on top of everything else. Yeah, he'd be like, uh, Mr. Vamos, Mr. Vamos, do I do I have to sit in this in this coffin the entire time? Can I at least get out and get some air sometimes? And then Vamos is just staring at him silently. I think he's like, oh right, and looks down at his uh, his notes, scr scrubbles through, <laughs> scrubbles, scribbles through, scruffles through, whatever, until he finds the right page. Which of course says no, absolutely not. Maybe this is all just one big, like, training day. You've got Gwyn zipping around behind the scenes, you know. Reminding people what, what the interns need to be doing at any given time. Spin attacks leave you open. This is true in real life and also in Dark Souls. Right, I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. There's definitely a way to go up and then down and then drop onto a shelf that we had on the previous tier, but I don't know if the way around is down here or not. I do find the catacombs a little bit tiresome sometimes. Also, incredibly, incredibly conspicuous secret wall, which we all love, I'm sure. Hey, where the fuck did you come from? Did you come down just to fight me? That sucks. I don't see why you guys aren't more welcoming. I straight, I straight up have no idea where these skeletons came from. There's only supposed to be like two in here. 
Getting cornered is bad in Dark Souls, generally speaking. Alright, that's enough, gents. Would you mind letting me get a nice, nice convenient backstab? Thank you. The Dark Souls skeletons are the clearest example of why spin attacks are bad. Then again, they do a lot of damage, I guess. Actually, now that I think about it, the skeleton wheels do nothing but spin attacks, so I guess they... they... I take it back, spin attacks are pretty good. I feel like you just made a pun with the archer comment, but I have no idea what the fuck it is. Is there nowhere to go on this side? Oh, I see what- no, okay, I follow what you mean now. I think there's only two archers. I think there's one on each side and then one on the- that outcropping. I don't believe- I don't know if the rest of them are from up here, although I suppose they may be. Regardless, this is where we get a very useful item that will let us fight a uh, bonus boss a bit later on. Which we won't be doing until the roundup at the end of the game, probably. The, uh, you know, the victory lap where you go and fight all the bosses that you didn't fight previously. Oh, big lad! He weighs a skeleton, which I think you guys already said. He's very skeletal, which I already said. And now he's no more. He's skeleton none at all. I figure that you can sl oh actually, I'll answer your question about slide rails in a second, but um so one of the reasons why I think that this statue is of Gwyn's wife and um youngest child Gwendolyn is that uh we find the Dark Moon Seance Ring, which is what allows you to talk to Gwendolyn in this um, this coffin with this statue in front of it. It's also the statue that we see in the Undead Parish and a couple of other places around, which I believe can reasonably inferred to be like the longest, the, the youngest son, uh, sorry, the youngest child of, um, of Gwyn. Oh, hi. Um, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not really interested in buying any fire right now today, sir. Um, why don't you leave your card, okay? And um, when I need to get some fire fitted, I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you. I think it was here. I think this is... I swear I saw an item up here when I ran past it previously. Must have been in all in my mind. I think it's the same impulse, incidentally, as whenever you see a cat yawn and you just instinctively go, Ooh, big yawn! Ooh, big steppy. This is where we get Tranquil Walk of Peace, which is... Oh, I know where we are. Time to run. Time to time to go. We've been dumped back. So I guess both of those secret passages drop you out here, huh? Well, yeah, but you're kind of weird. You like you like you don't like cats. You like seagulls. You, you know, you're cool, but you're weird. You have you have hipster animal liking opinions. Down you go. Oh yeah, my flatmate may have heard of you as the as the friend of mine who likes seagulls. Which I'm afraid you're going to just have to live as now. <laughs> I think that's Vamos's hole, so let's just leave. I mean, I'm sure you're known in other ways as well, but uh, she knows that she knows that you're the friend I send seagull videos to when we t when we see seagulls. In fact, you may know her yourself very slightly as uh, the voice of "Oh my God, he shit on that grave." Disrespectful, which I know was of great delight to you. So um, yeah, you have acrylic acrylic splatter to thank for that. I 
I should have put it on, on Twitter or something, see if I could go viral, but honestly, it's such a nice present for you, my good friend, that I, I kind of felt like I shouldn't. Oh boy, these catacombs, they do go on a bit. Still, we're nearly done now. I've hoovered up most of the garbage that's been left lying around here, or looted these graves, I guess you could say, if you wanted to characterise it unfairly. It's a very grave crime. Just a, and just a whole new avenue for puns. Well, the thing is, it's a coastal city. The thing about Aberdeen is that there's just huge oil fields offshore. Um, so a ton of a ton of oil people, executives, like, are, are coming in and out constantly. And all the oil workers who work on the oil rigs are constantly coming in and out as well. Um, by helicopter, usually, which is interesting, at the very least. I think seagulls do have similar energy to cats, at least cats who are in bastard mode. There is this kind of like, you know, bastardous energy. I think that they share the same category, if you will. Why are you exploding? What was his deal? He was miles away. I suppose a lot of people might suffer with premature explosion around here, but there's, um, there's very convenient little blue pills you can get that deal with that. Are you? <laughs> Is this you? Are you a severed floating head enchanted to explode when near enemies, but you find yourself going off too early? You and millions of other Americans like you. Blah 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 blah. You know, you get the joke. I'm too tired to make it work. Because my god have I been sleeping badly lately. Conveniently, we have saved all of our crystal soul spears, so we should be able to blast the bejesus out of the uh, titanite demon who's had hiding up here. He's almost imperceptible in the darkness. But there he is. Can your mommy soup? I'll, I'll stitch this. That was a nice chunk of damage. So there's a reason why we took, why we put the effort in of um, getting Crystal Soul Spear, and it's because it just does an insane amount of damage. Does Viagra mean something? Eyes of Death. Eyes of Death are interesting. They are how you invade people as part of the Gravelord Servant Covenant, which is tied in some way to that- hang on, can you climb inside that? Or is this- there's, some, there's something covenanty over here, maybe, beyond just that? I'm not sure. Or maybe it just means there's covenant items, I'm not sure what that person meant. But, 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 but. Ah, uh, I see. It was a bit of a stretch, I'm afraid. Um, much like how? Oh, prominent product will stretch your genitalia. No, that's terrible. Uh, I keep being on the verge of having a whole thing ready to go in my brain and then just being like, nope, too tired, ollie outie. No jokes today. Oh shit, fuck. I love the energy of this one that was halfway up the ladder, like, ugh, fuck. Starts climbing back down again. There's nothing more frustrating and exhausting than being halfway up a ladder and then realizing that you have to go back down again because you forgot something. Oh, is that what you do with them? Oh, they the oh, hang on, they mu they must be the the promotion material then, right? Uh, they're what you give the the covenant to get promoted. Now, if I drop down here, there's a guy for me to fight, but I don't want to do it with my blessed sword. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go fight some guys and then I'm, then I'm going to come back up and drop down to fight him. I think that should work. Because it's a black knight. Oh, it's good to ambush people. It's nice not to be the, the one amp being ambushed for once. Can't you get the Gravelord sword from, from just killing Nito with his soul? Soul transposition. So the real risk here is that these guys are kind of dangerous. Actually, hmm. 
I do have this. <laughs> I do have this. There we go. Because the problem is that the arrows can actually semi-stun lock you, which is bad. Weirdly, these guys use um, flame attacks from their magic skull things, but um, they're not pyromancers and they're not associated with pyromancy in any way. So I'm not entirely sure what's up with that. There's no real explanation or development of the idea, I don't think. What do you get from his soul then if you don't get his big dumb scythe thing that he has? Or is the sword different? I'm sure it's a sordid tale, but I still want to hear it. I'm really going ham on the puns tonight. I think it's because I'm so tired I can't think of anything funnier. Really? I thought all the boss souls had boss weapons. Where's the guy? Actually, I've got one crystal soul spear left. Let's use that on him. Hi! Sorry to drop in. Wow. Yeah, you see? Almost completely fucking destroyed him in one hit. Crystal soul spear is where it's at. Huh, okay. Well, I guess that's that then. No soul for him. So this is the room with the skeleton wheels, so I'm being very careful. If I aggro- Oh, there's one. I should be able to hit them with the uh, overarching sort of throw of this. Luckily, we've leveled up enough that we can kill them in one hit, so they're not much of a threat anymore. But uh, if I was here in the early game, this would be basically like, it would take every spell I had to kill these guys and they would be very dangerous. I think there's eight or nine of them in this room, so we're just going to blast away until they're all gone. And they might die from the arrows, actually, now that I've upgraded it. Oh, no, I'm far enough away that they don't take any damage. There's another one over there, see if I can ping that one as well. There's a neat trick, by the way, that I don't think I've ever mentioned before, which is that if something is too low, too much, too far below you for you to lock onto it, if you if you move the camera around like this so that you can see it, then you can lock onto it, and that lock on will remain even when the camera is back behind you. Um, so that's a neat trick if you can do it, which I can. Oh shit, I forgot about those items. Okay, so if you drop down from above, you can get some items over there. It'd be a bit of a pain to go back up. I'll clear this room out, and then I'll go up. And then I'll drop down and then I'll go fight the boss. That's what I'll do. Thus the pact can be fulfilled and I will have grabbed every item, which I have to do. Um, or that demon will get my soul. You know, it's, it's unfortunate and kind of a pain, but oh, in the end it's so worth it, you know. I sold my soul to have like 20, 20 viewers on Twitch. I don't, I don't know, there's a joke there somewhere. Anyway, so this uh, ravine over here is the way to the boss. He's going to get away. <laughs> if he runs me over and I die, I'll be very upset. Good. Are we all right? Are we fine? I think we're fine. There we go. I like the way they fall over and then just fucking explode. This is why motorcycles are so dangerous in real life. And you've got to bear in mind, uh, those frictionless bearings that they have, because of course, skeleton bones just float around one another, you know, so you can rotate them around the joint without any friction. Uh, unless you get an absolute hell of a lot of torque out of them, which is why they are so volatile. Look, see, see all these bloodstains? This is other people who have rested at that bonfire and are now fucking stuck here. That's why I did not fall for this trap. So, you're learning a lot today about how to get through Dark Souls without being horribly stuck and it's terrible by the way i don't believe there's anybody watching who hasn't uh watched any of my streams or my youtube stuff before so instead of plugging all that i'll just kind of beg you guys to recommend me to people because you know i really want to grow my audience which 
It's kind of embarrassing, really. Like, oh no. Oh no, I have a desire. How dare people know I need to maintain my aloofness. With bits of luck, I should be able to get up. Oh hey, I missed this. Uh, with a bit of luck, I should be able to get all the way- where the fuck? All the way back and then drop down without any trouble. Since I've killed everything already. And then I can just go fight the boss, which I can also kill with like one crystal soul spear or a couple ordinary soul spears because he's really weak. I believe he has the lowest hit points and resistance of almost any boss in the game. It might even be lower than the, um, than the, uh, the Taurus demon. Is this the safe place to drop off on? Should be a- yeah, there's things down there. Okay, cool. I think it's here that's the best place. So, um, this is the summon sign of Paladin something. He's got a- he's got a name like Gerald or Gertrude or something. He will actually invade us later uh, as a red spirit if we're human when we're going through Nito's domain. I don't know what his deal is or why he's here or why he's kind of such a dick. <laughs> but you can recruit him for this fight if you need one, but um, it's probably the easiest boss fight in the game. No, I fucking missed the other... God damn it, now we have to go... Now we have to do it again. Oh well, oh well, oh well. There's nothing more tiresome than realising that you can't walk on a ledge. Although at least it's not that ledge in the uh, painted realm of Arianis, which is one I might have... Did I ever go back and pick that thing up? I'm not sure. The hole in my inventory will burn forever. My kleptomaniac tendencies will not let me rest. I must have it all. I must gather every item. Don't use them for anything. Just keep them. Just squirrel them away in case of a rainy day where I happen to need 15 swords. Like, we all have those days. They kind of... They come and go, but they're a natural part of life, you know? Into every life, some swords must fall. I guess the summer might be helpful for the skeletons, actually, but, um... Pinwheel is kind of just really not an issue. And now we get the priest stuff. So this is something like the 7th or 8th, um, oh don't worry darling, I'm already ignoring you. This is something like the 7th or 8th uh, of the like player corpses that we find. As you play through the game, all of the starting sets of armour and weapon that um, each of the starting classes has can be found on various corpses. Not piecemeal, but whole. My personal belief is that any one of the chosen undeads you might potentially have been is someone at some point going on this, this, this endlessly repeating quest. Um, this, this infinite undead sacrificing quest to prolong existence. And, um, given that, I've forgotten what I'm talking about. So this seems normal. This is a cool vibe. This is just like, this is a chill place to be and not strange or uncomfortable at all. Hi, hi. you good buddy? So that's a no then. So he turns into a ton of copies of himself, all of which will blast away at you with fireballs that can do a lot of damage if you're not careful. Um, but provided you keep hitting the real one, he's uh, not really an issue. He also has this habit of going invisible, but um, if you have auto attacking laser brain turrets, you can just like do that and he's gonzo. So yeah, uh, not a difficult boss, but he does draw- ah, fantastic, the Mask of the Child, that's what I was hoping I would get. Mask of the Child is most people's favourite of these masks that he drops. He drops the fa Mask of the, fi the ch Father, the Child, and the Mother. Uh, the Child grants stamina regeneration, and the Father uh, reduces your equipment load, which <laughs> is why that- uh, is why the, the Legend of Giant Dad exists. Which is, um, which was a, a PvP meta topping, um, loadout that people developed, where if you leveled up in a very specific way, you could equip one of the heaviest weapons in the game and the heaviest armor in the game by, by just kind of exploiting, mixing together certain items in unusual ways. But that involved wearing the giant's armor and the, uh, armor of, um, 
and the uh, the helmet of the father, the mask of the father, which is why it's Giant Dad, the legend who never dies. Is there a... Uh, I thought there was a bonfire around here. This is just how you get back over the other side, I guess. So what I need to do now is equip my beloved horrible skull lantern, which is my least favourite way of lighting my way through this area. The alternatives are to get the uh, glowing grub from... Solaire, which we should have, but don't because it disappeared for some reason. We've got Solaire's other gear, but we don't have the, the grub he was wearing on his head. The other alternative is to take one of these uh, sorceries from the second DLC zone, Ulasil, which um, lights up the area around you, but I don't want to do the DLC yet because it's a pain in the ass. So I guess these guys tie these... Huh, weird. Okay. So the animations we have for the sorcer uh, the necromancers involves them holding these skulls and conjuring fire out of them, but um, that's not actually what it says here. It says they droop from long beard locks, which is a peculiar thing to do, but whatever. So if we hold it up, we can see what we're doing. I'm not sure where this goes. Is this the drop down? Oh, interesting. Yes, it is. So if we want to get back, we can come over here and that'll drop down into the uh, room full of horrible things that we've already fought. But um, that aside, I think it's time to head on and try and find ourselves a uh, bonfire, which should be over here somewhere. Two of giants is such a pain because you can't really, you can't use your shield to block and you can't really uh, see where you're going a lot of the time. Because it's pitch black down here, but it's... Um, Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. But that's what the but the the item description says. It it dangles from their beards. So, you know, who who do you trust, me or an item description? See, those those are a guy. Is that enough? Okay, looks like we're probably fine. That's probably enough damage. What does this say? Shortcut ahead. That's sort of true. There is there is a way down here, and there's some stuff down at the bottom. But yeah, when we're holding up the weird, horrible, probably stinky beard lantern, you can't actually do anything else, which means that you have to be careful if there's a fight. Which, of course, there will be, because it's Dark Souls. Yeah, that's fair. That over there is Isolith, where we've been. So, again, there is this uh, very strong interconnectedness between all of the zones in Dark Souls and all these different areas. I think I am going to do the drop down here because it was more convenient to do it now than to come back up here later. So if we drop on here, we can drop on there. And then drop on here. I think there's like four guys over there, but we'll be fine because we have magic. I just love that they fire automatically as soon as you're in, in range. It just It's so much simpler than actually trying to fight something in the dark. Because as you can see, it's extremely limited when you don't actually have the, the skull shedding light. I think there's a little ladder. Here it is. Huh, how do you get that one over there? Do you drop down from up up above here, I think, maybe? The really frustrating thing about not being able to use a shield here is uh, that there are archer guys who will be shooting arrows at us a bit later, and because they're giants, they shoot giant arrows. Giant archers, giant arrows, fairly logical. Frustrating to fight. As will be revealed in the multiplayer strategy game series Let's Play I'm currently working on. I've got like 10 episodes ready to post, but I'm secretly worried that if I start um, posting those on YouTube, one of my opponents will be smart enough to find it and then get insight into my strategy, which is unacceptable to me. It's simply too risky. So I might refrain from, from vulturing every single item in this area, like some kind of incredibly sticky-fingered kleptomaniac gremlin, and instead... Just, just head through the critical parts of the zone. But um, having said that, I do seem to be just grabbing everything. It's tempting to try and drop on, but I suspect I will die. 
this is actually one of the few areas of the game where the uh, the shining pebble item thingy is useful because it lets you it lets you detect whether a cliff is tall enough that dropping off of it will kill you. However, fun fact, um, there's a lot of parts here where if you if you do use that and try and uh, drop off a ledge, it will often hit the side on the way down, stick, and be like, "It's fine, you can drop down here." You can't because you'll bounce off um, and die when it did not. So you have to be very careful. Oh boy, hi, okay. Youch. See, I keep I keep hitting the button thinking I'm uh, blocking, but I'm not. That was close. And there is, as you can see, very good reason for uh, hands-free lighting solutions in this area. So. If I drop down here, I can actually get to the... Mm, nope, not here. Over there. And then you can get to the bonfire. But I think there's something I missed back over this way. There's another slot. I guess there's not another slide. Huh. I do find this one of the most difficult to navigate areas of Dark Souls just because it's so dark and I can't see goddamn anything. Oh, I missed that. So if you if you scoot to one side, you can you can drop onto that ledge and pick something up. Not sure what the blue- oh, hi. Uh, we cool? We cool. It's fine, don't worry about it. So instead of talking to him, I'm gonna go light the bonfire and then I'll come back and talk to him. I don't know what these glowing lights are, I don't remember ever seeing them before. That might just be my incredibly shitty memory, you never know. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, over here we have where the skeletons are. You can actually get up on top of here and fight these ones, although I can't remember how. And, uh... Maybe you drop down from above? But inside this, there is some cool stuff, but there is also an absolute fuck-ton of these guys to fight, and I don't feel like fighting them. So if we run up here, we can grab maybe aggro this guy and fight him somewhere a bit more convenient, where we're not getting hammered by arrows at the same time, and maybe he'll fall off. Just thread the needle on that one. Failed to thread the needle on that one. I don't know if it's even following me. Oh, I know where the bonfire is. It's just that I forgot about I forgot about this stuff and I want to grab it. Oh, there he, he fell down. That's good. So we should be able to just... Uh... That was not the spell I meant to cast, but oh well. Any port in a storm, any spell in a crisis, it's, it's all fine, don't worry about it. So down inside that um, big coffin is actually, I think, the last ember we can find in the game. Maybe there's one more. And uh, if we go do that... Oh, hey, look. We're back where we were. I could have dropped down here previously and I just didn't notice. Ow. Rude. So yeah, if we go in there, I'm going to want uh, all, this, all of the, the spells in my quiver to be ready, but let's just have a look-see so you can see, and that's that's a fucking lot of these guys. If you have Pyromancy, you can kind of blast them a bit more easily, otherwise you kind of have to rely on arrow, uh, soul arrows, which, when you can only aim fairly close, can be a bit inconsistent. And if you cast it here, it just splashes on the ceiling, so you need to lure them around this side and then get the lock on, which they aren't happy about. So I might come back and get this later. I might just um, skip this because we don't need that ember for anything. In fact, it, actually, it might be the enchanted ember. I'm not sure, but we are just going to be using the Velka's Rapier for the rest of the game, so it's not an issue either way. Anyway, so having told you what's over there, we'll just move the fuck on because I don't think it will be good radio to watch me hurl myself on, onto their Falchions over and over and over. It would be easy as pie if I had a hands-free light source, but since we're doing this the hard way, I'm going to have to do this the hard way. Be wary of Dark Wraith, really? Didn't think there were any around here. Maybe people like to invade in this area. Okay, let's uh, 
upgrade this bonfire a little bit and then I'm going to need to take a five minute break to get some more water and go to the bathroom. So we'll finish this zone and its boss and then, uh, well, we'll do that after I've gone to the bathroom. So I will be right back. I am back and I would like to clarify that uh, me going to the bathroom and me getting more to drink have nothing to do with one another. Also, I just realised that the like four follows I've had today I think are all bots, probably from some kind of horrible Twitch hate streaming bot situation. Um, I don't know what's up with that. Maybe they've actually put tools in that stop spam raids from happening. I don't know. I'd be surprised if they'd done that and I haven't heard about it, but... On the other hand, I haven't seen being, haven't been seeing horrible spam in my chat, but it is disheartening. Every time I hear the "you gained a follower" noise or "you gained a subscriber" noise or whatever, my heart leaps, and then I'm like, "Wait, no, it's almost certainly a bot." So uh, let's t let's have a chat to this guy. He seems completely normal and friendly and not strange at all. Just hanging out here amongst a bunch of dead guys. You know, someone has to keep the dead company. Why, thank you. Are you a cleric or something? If you say you're a cleric, he'll be pissed off later, so we'll say no. Really? Then I don't know what I'm saying. There's a fine stash of treasure right down that hole. I found it first, but well, we're friends now. I'll split it with you. In any case, have a look. It'll shimmer you blind. <laughs> Well, sure, that seems completely legit and normal. That's a completely normal thing to say to someone and a completely normal thing to offer them, isn't it? I'll just look over this edge and, and see what's down there. Have a quick, have a quick look, see what's up. How tragic. The kicker off of ledges has become the kicker off of ledgy. Yeah. <laughs> so this is this is Patches the hyena. Patches is a recurring character in uh, Dark Souls. 
I think he first shows up in Demon Souls, and he's definitely in all of the Dark Souls games as well. So down here, we should find... What the fuck is with these lights, though? So weird. I straight up never seen them before. Anyway, down here we should find um, her and her two bodyguards who've gone hollow. Well, I don't think there's other. I don't think there's raids happening on other platforms right now. But um, I don't know how much better of a situation YouTube is for streaming in general. I've never streamed on YouTube. Um, it might be a good idea to start streaming on YouTube just because I already have an existing audience on YouTube, um, and trying to build one on Twitch has been kind of disheartening a little bit. Um, get wrecked, guys. There's a good echo in here. The acoustics are amazing. I'm certain that... So in order to get back up, we have to go kill a bunch of really weird skeleton agglomerations, I guess you could call them, which will pop out in a second, I'm sure, which are down here somewhere. But yeah, so I've thought about, I've thought about streaming on YouTube just because I do have the pre-existing um, audience for my Let's Plays. But, um, like, st streaming on Twitch has a much wider audience, kind of, to begin with already. And it's it's kind of, it's tools for assembling streams and stuff are, are really good. I haven't really experimented with YouTube. And also, I don't trust YouTube as a... <laughs> it's this really weird position. I don't trust Amazon as a company at all. I also don't trust YouTube, uh, Google as a company at all. So it's kind of like... Which of these two things would do you, do you want to use for this stuff? If you don't trust either of them, what are you going to do? Well, um, I kind of picked Twitch because, you know, Twitch is the place for streaming. Most people stream on Twitch, most people don't stream on YouTube. On the other hand, maybe, my, maybe you know, maybe I'd get more views if I switched back to YouTube just because of the, the people on YouTube who aren't necessarily switching over to Twitch. It's all a mystery. I don't really know what the answers are. Around here somewhere is a ladder, I think, which will get us out, or it might be a secret passage. This, I mean, there's something somewhere. Here it is. This is where those two guys attacked us from. But yeah, so Patches is this recurring character. He, he kind of betrays you in every single one of these games. Uh, and then in the final DLC to Dark Souls 3, which is the official end of Dark Souls as a series forever, um, he actually gets this whole long character arc about, you know, who he was and how he becomes who he is and why he's such a, a weird little freak. But um, his whole thing is that he, he tricks you into looking at something and then kicks you down a hole or traps you in a traps you in a room or whatever. Hi, Mabarinthia. Welcome to the stream. Nice to see you. Um, I don't know if you... I, I think you're on American time, I think, I think, but uh, I don't know if I've ever actually told you that I stream uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 7pm UK to, UK time, so uh, I know I saw you talking ages ago about how there weren't enough streamers at night in American time, so hey, guess what? <laughs> that should work out pretty good. Oh, it's 3 p.m.? Really? Okay. I mean, time's kind of a mystery. It's all kind of a fake idea, no matter what. I'm not sure what AWS is, though. Anyway, let's go confront this guy for his misdeeds. Oh, you! I... Well, let's 
Just calm down. Talk about this. I did you wrong, but I didn't mean it. These temptations, they can, well, overcome me. You know what I mean, don't you? Please, forgive me. You and me, we're jolly undead outcasts, aren't we? I mean, if you agree with him and stuff, he'll become a vendor back at the Filing Shrine. But no, like, you put me in a hole. Nobody puts baby in a hole. Another good Dark Souls chuckle. I think he asks you for for forgiveness another time, and if you say no again, he attacks you. Also, if you say you're a priest, then when you come back up here, he attacks you. Because um, he just hates priests, which is understandable as a general rule. So this is the really difficult bit, because this is where we'll start to see skeleton... I think they're called giant dog skeletons, or giant skeleton dogs or something. Anyway, they're really difficult to fight and a huge, huge pain to deal with. Because they have this big floppy attack, which is very dog-like, I'll be honest. Oh right, of course, I'm not here at like level 10, I'm here at level 70 or something, so of course they're not as tough as they should be. Wow. What are the chances? Beautiful little gyroscopic spin. Anyway. Patches has Patches has this kind of like he's Patches' face has the energy of a man who's very who's very disappointed at what he knows is going to happen. It's just it's a shame that this inescapable cosmic inevitability is going to result in um, him betraying and murdering whoever it is he fucking meets. Leave me alone. Ah oh, beans. See, that, uh, that Silver Knight almost always dives off the cliff edge, basically, as soon as you go in there. I think there's another bonfire before we get to where the, uh, to where the red, red, red guy spawns and attacks us. So I'm not gonna bother, I'm not gonna bother turning human again. Don't wanna lose another humanity. But yeah, Patches is kind of like a... You, you threw me in a hole and tried to kill me. Yeah, kind of like mildly embarrassed about it. Kind of like, oh, it's, it sucks how it's kind of inescapable that I do that, huh? Kind of energy to him. Like he knows he does wrong and he knows he's not going to change his ways. It's this weird compulsion thing. Yeah, that's also true. He does have that energy too. I hate these things. If I had another crystal, if I had another uh, copy of crystal, homing crystal sorcery, I would use that and just kill them with that. Because they will just kill you. If I blast them with the old, uh, the soul spears, that'll kill them. If I blast them with the other thing, that'll kill them. The real, it's just... I'm so limited on the ammunition for them. That's the real problem. And if I could, if I could fight, maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just try seeing where I'm going and being careful. Maybe that'll work better. Hmm? You never know. After all the damage output we have on Velka's rapier is what? Well, fuck off! Well, that's fifty thousand souls down the drain. I never even saw him. Alright, oh, okay. I see how it is. All guns blazing. Let's go. If worse comes to worse, you can sprint past all these guys, but um, I don't want to miss out on all the items that I would be losing out on. Not after I've lost 50,000 souls to a, a... A shithead, I'll be honest. That's what he is, a shithead. I hate this creature so much. Die in an explosion. And there's definitely another one around the corner here. I 
And then there's a giant one, uh, just an ordinary giant, I guess, over here, who needs ordinary stabs for his ordinary giantness. And there's some stuff you can get by dropping down or diving around, which is risky, given all the difficulty I'm having fighting these things. A head grub. A head grub. My kingdom for a grub to wear on my head. Whoops, that's, that was close. Definitely more of them around. So this path kind of loops around over itself four or five times here. It's it's kind of a complicated mess of a situation. There's a few items to grab. Yeah, it's really weird. I killed Solaire and he dropped all of his other things, but the um the the sunlight grub just wasn't there. I don't know if it was a bug or if it dropped as an item on the ground and I somehow missed it. But um, it should have just gone into my inventory with the rest of his stuff. I just don't know what happened. I've checked through my inventory like four times, and it's it's just not here. I bet that was I bet that was another bot. If you're not a bot, say hello. In fact, my view account isn't going up, so it must be a bot, like by definition. I should probably go download the uh, anti-bot tools. I can hear them. They can pat. They pa they pant in the darkness. It's horrible. No, not him. God damn it. I think there's another four of them down here. Maybe more. And after we've cleared them out, we'll go and get that item by dropping down. But the risk of doing that first is that you then have to fight your way through these guys down here, which is less than ideal. There's, there's definitely a spot around here somewhere with three or four of them together. Aha! The backup bonfire. Yeah, I know, right? Um, I mean, I thought bots weren't supposed to be a thing. I thought that... Um, it's some kind of horrible situation where, where bots are uh, spamming and raiding and stuff, but it's like, um, have they like sanctioned bots to be allowed now, but like they don't show up as, as actual guys? Still, we're going to be very careful as we as we tiptoe around, keeping an eye out for any of those goddamn... Oh, they're down here, aren't they? I bet that's where they are. Well, I guess I found them. I think that's the last of them. Um... This should just be the path on to the end of the zone now, I think. Oh boy. Yep, this is the drop down. Okay, that should be the last of them so I can go back and get the stuff. I just, uh, I knew bots were always a thing, but I thought that bots on Twitch weren't like... I thought that they were accounts controlled by macros. I didn't think that there was like a thing which was just like an, an actual legit, like... Like the system that, that the system knows is a bot rather than a... Um, a thing rather than, you know, like a, a, a zombie account controlled by a bot. Oh, I need to go up higher to get that. Okay, and then I can rest at the bonfire and then we can get a wiggle on and go fight the boss, actually. So that we can be done with this fucking zone that I can't stand. I might have missed one item, but you know what? I can I can live with that. Difficult as it is. I thought I saw golden name for a second, but uh, if I roll off of here... Am I on the right bit? Yes, I am. Fantastic. So as soon as we grab that item, we'll get attacked by um, a whole bunch of those wiggly waggly guys.
Hmm, interesting. That's a shame. See, this is one of the advantages. No, Leroy, Leroy invades a bit, a bit further on. That's why I'm going to go back to the bonfire and uh, rest so that I can be human for him, you know? Who is obviously a reference to Leroy Jenkins, another legend who never dies. I do kind of miss World of Warcraft. I know there's people who I know there's people who stream playing um, MMOs, but I can't imagine anything more boring than watching someone else play an MMO. I really don't. I really don't see the appeal of of MMO streams, um, even ones as visually pretty as like Final Fantasy XIV. I just do not get that. I do not get the appeal. Oh fuck. Oh, we're all right. It's fine. Well, now I'm a little bit lost. I think I needed to go down one more level, and then I could get to the bonfire. But I was majorly into World of Warcraft when I was a teenager. Um, I was a as, a as a huge nerd and fantasy fan. I was um, very into the original. Well, I, I think I played Warcraft two after Warcraft three, but I was very into those games. Um, and I had a big love for the setting, which is interesting considering how they've let's not say butchered, but like just retconned almost every conceivable component of it in the desperate, desperate attempt to mine as much content <laughs> over the course of, like, god, however many years it's been. 16 years or something since that game came out. Um, I never did much raiding, but I was in a role-playing community, which was fun. Where the fuck is my bonfire? This is unacceptable, I need my bonfire. I think it's this way. I can hear a bonfire. Yeah, there we go. So this is going to bring back all the ones I killed, but most of them I should be able to skip with a bit of luck. I'm definitely going to need to save my uh, soul spears though. Oh, did they? Interesting. I think I can just get past these guys. Ooh, I can hear them. Ooh, they're sinister. I forgot to be human. Oops. Time to go back. Yowza. Okay. I don't want. I don't feel like dealing with that today. It shouldn't be because I only bought the bottom looks bottomless box after <laughs> I already. Um, I already realised I didn't have the bug, um, because I uh, I never actually bought the bottomless box on this playthrough until this stream. At the very start of this stream, I went back and uh, bought that and put some stuff in it. And also, don't be mean to yourself. You're a delightful human. Although I do forget to be human in real life. So, you know, I guess say what say what say what about yourself you want to. I don't <laughs> Who am I to judge? I'm a robot after all. Here we go. So I don't I don't think there's any more giant skeletons on this path at this point. Uh it's just the way to the boss. And also a nice view of Ash Lake. Or more accurately, a nice view of the substrate of the world. I find this really cosmologically interesting. It's never commented on literally anywhere, but um, we've gone deep enough that that's the world. The underside of the world is, like the world is built upon um, upon the roots, or, or upon the branches of the arch trees. So the world itself has this kind of like underlayer, this substrate. And if you go deep enough, you can sort of see the, the metaphysical underpinnings of existence. If you go down deep enough, you eventually find something that's basically how it was during the primordial age of um, of stasis we did go to the uh, to that place previously get wrecked wizards only fool knights drool wizards rule 
We whiz hard, we play hard. Wait, that means something to Americans. <laughs> it is a pretty nice view, I'll give it that. I don't know if this is actually geo like geophysically looking upon Ash Lake. This might just be looking at another chunk of the substrate of the universe. Because Ash Lake might be positioned differently. And you do get to it by going inside the trunks of one of these trees and climbing down its hollow internals. So I guess there's two ways to get yeah, get through there. One's to go through, go through, I guess, the literal afterlife down here. And the other is... Uh, that. Oh, huh? oh, we got the camera to clip through the ceiling. Nice. What other forbidden secrets can we discover? Oh, this is a fun area. This is actually... Oh, hang on. No, it's not quite yet. We've got a bit further to go. First. But um, finally, we're in an area that's properly brightly lit, so I can I can go back to having my having my bow available and using my shield, which is really what we've been wanting to do this entire time. Now there's a giant skeleton and a giant archer and a bunch of these guys for us to deal with, so... They're not so tough, though. They do look really unpleasant. I've never seen something in a video game look so realistically like a bunch of trash globbed together. But um, fortunately, they're easy to disarm. And if you fight them properly, they're armless. I think they can. I think they can teleport behind you, so you've got to be careful about that. This one's a different one, but um, also they have do have the three sixty attack. What's what's better than I guess one skeleton doing spin attacks? About fifteen of them all at once. But there's a, there's another skeleton guy over there, which is why I'm being a bit a bit careful. Because if you sprint past it, if you run to fight that archer, which is understandable, and many people do instinctively just sprint to fight him, that guy blindsides you with a kick to the side of the head. And as you can see, so many people have died to that. Oh hey, he actually spotted it. <laughs> and then it killed him from behind. Who else have we got here? Getting caught. I'm secretly hoping that if I activate one of these bloodstains, we'll see someone sprint past the corner and get kicked off the edge. There we go! Fantastic! Lovely. Delightful. Anyway, that's why you've got to be careful. As I always say in Dark Souls, whenever you're rounding a corner for the first time, you always, always, always have your shield up. Bye. That's him down that hole. And now we come to the room I was thinking of, which is really interesting visually. Um, in a couple of minor aspects at any rate. Anyway, so these are the like lesser pyromancers who have followed Pinwheel and are just him again, really. Mechanically, they're just the same boss, uh, the boss as an enemy. Oh wait, really? But I did ki also kill all the bugs, that's weird. Um, maybe I'm mistaken. This is, I should probably just run through and kill them all, but I'm scared of how much damage they do. Oh, hey, baby skeleton. Punches above his weight, apparently. <laughs> Best enemy in the game, by far. Oh, that would explain it. Um, so, um, this is kind of like the final worship room in front of Nito. Uh, there's a lot of speculation about what Pinwheel's deal is. Um, the generally accepted theories are that these guys are his acolytes his followers, and that Pinwheel himself is a necromancer who became very devoted to forbidden knowledge in the hope that he could resurrect his his family, his wife and child. But in the process of that, he became sort of undead in a weird way, and they sort of agglomerated together into a, into a triune entity, which is why he has all three masks on. In terms of visual design, I actually really like him. He's a very interesting, you know, shape. Um, this kind of humpbacked, hunched necromancer carrying these lanterns sticking out like weird horrible spider limbs and his three masks which of course are um inspired by um, ancient greek theatrical masks because you probably know this but in ancient greece uh actors would wear masks that represented their roles so you always knew who was supposed to be whom and um i believe it's a very direct and intentional reference 
with these guys. You know, you might be right. There's a lot of baby skeletons here. Maybe this is where they come to spawn. They swim, they swim up river, by which I mean down ground. Baby skeleton. He's fine. Don't worry about him. Everyone loves a baby skull. Ow, fuck. I don't love a baby skull. What the fuck? Die now. 242 damage. This is insane. I'm just going to kill them with my sword. I don't know why I'm trying so hard. Pow. Oh, right. That's why. Um, yeah, the swarm of baby skeletons will fuck you up if you're not careful. Especially considering the fire damage these guys are going to be outputting as well. So you've got to be careful of the Skeller Swarm. As I understood it, no players have masks and costuming and stuff that all together represent the character. It's a bit like, um... But you have, like, stock characters who come back between different no plays, don't you? It's a bit like, um... Oh, what is it called? The Italian, uh... There's an Italian art... Uh, Commedia... Commedia dell'arte. Which is a, uh, which is a, a, a theatrical form where um, you have different stories with the same characters reoccurring, doing different you know different things, but according to their natures. So you have these these like fundamental paired down humans. Also, but like the visual the visual of this is great. Like these skeletons as they as they march towards their their lord, you know the king of the dead, the first of the dead, Nito, bowing, kowtowing almost towards the uh, the place where their leader is. But it's also blocked off. Why is this sealed away like that? These babies are kind of hard to hit with a rapier, let's be real. This was one of the best um, humanity farming locations in the game originally. Um... DLC has added a better humanity farming location, and there's a couple of other really good humanity farming locations, but um, if you needed humanity, this was usually where you came for a while, because these are one of the only locations with infinitely spawning enemies. As long as you're in this area, they're going to be popping up out of the... Uh, popping up out of the, the water to come fight you, which is... I just love their confidence, you know? Oh, Lord, for the confidence of a baby skeleton... I mean, they're already dead. What have they got to fear? I think that's all the items in the... No, there might be one or two things I've missed, actually. Yep, see? That one's up there. Missed that. Anyway, it's time to go fight the guy we like. So, let's jump in here. Having defeated Paladin Leroy, I think you're supposed to be able to summon him for the fight, but I can't remember where his um, summon sign is. Or maybe... Maybe you can only summon him for Pinwheel? I think there's an NPC you can summon for this fight, but I can't for the life of me remember who it is. Also, frustrating that you take damage from the fall, frankly. I'm so glad that uh, FromSoft grew out of that phase, that they sort of... Give you a free a free feather fall every time you drop into a boss arena in the later games. I really like Nito's sort of horrible beard of scraggly skeleton legs. He's like a giant centipede, but um Ow. He's like a centipede made of guys. Some kind of man centipede. So I'm not going to bother fighting all of the skeletons that he summons because periodically he will destroy them anyway. Um, my main focus is instead going to be on uh, just wailing on him sufficiently that he takes enough damage that he's not an issue. And I've just now remembered why my rule for this 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 let's play, well not let's play for this stream series is no talking in boss fights. I mean, you guys can say stuff if you want, but I ain't gonna. Maybe I should kill skeletons. 
spoofed. So Nito has this big AoE attack that he usually uses where he um, does explosions. Uh, oh fuck, I need the, the thingamajig back. I wonder if I can dual wield lanterns, that'd be fun. Um, I should be able to just run past most of the stuff to get back to the boss. And doesn't he continually summon more skeletons there? That's what I remember. But, um... Yes, perhaps I should switch. Really? He doesn't? Okay, well, fuck it. I'm switching to the... Maybe they maybe they respawn, but... um. Oh, hang on. How's my weight? 17.4, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Yes. I didn't even realise there was one of these here. Time for more tortoise shell. Delicious. I wonder if Pinwheel's Necromancers respawn. I, d I don't normally lose to Nito, so... So yeah, I am... Uh... Yeah, uh, he has this big AoE attack that, that kills his skeletons and, uh, well, kills everything around him, so... Oh, they drop the pinwheel, pinwheel masks as well, do they? I thought you could only get... Um... But you'd only get them from the thing. I'm getting more bots. They don't seem to be spamming, so... Ah, oh, come on, don't die. <laughs> I completely forgot you could also buy them from patches. I often end up killing patches for funsies. Okay, this is dumb. I'm getting bots showing up. I don't know how to get rid of them easily. I don't have the energy to delete all of these manually. I'll do that after the stream. Yeah, that's what I thought, but they don't seem to be actually saying anything, so I don't know what's up with that. But I don't have the tools to get rid of them right now, so... If they start saying stuff, I'll just switch it into, uh, into no chat mode and you guys can watch in, in quiet, respectful silence. <laughs> I mean, it's not like there's more than four people watching right now anyway. I mean, it's just because I picked the, the like, LGBT tag um, that they've shown up. But I've done that for every previous stream, and this is, like, stream 11, so... Or 12, even. So I don't know what their deal is. But I do know that some people have built really good tools for removing um, hate, uh, hate raid bots. Did that drop something? What the hell do these drop? Oh, Titanite. Nice. I think there's like two more of these on here were there. Oh right, I lost like 50,000 souls to that boss. Oh well. I can't actually see the... Can you guys see the, the names of, bot of, the, of, of new followers when they follow? Yeah, Commander Root, as I understand it, is a, is like a tool for some some guy to do something, but it's not part of the hate raids. It, it massively predates them. Um, oh, okay. Well, our horrible our horrible phrases in the title because that that could be how they how they're what they're getting out of this. Because if they're spamming like racist shit up, I'm just gonna, when I upload this to YouTube, put like a, a black box up in that corner and rather than having to deal with it. I can't tell if your yeses are to whether they are doing horrible racist stuff in the chat or not. Or, or their names are horrible and racist.
See, that's another benefit that I would have for having a second screen. Oh, these guys do come back. I think I can just get past them. But yeah, if I can get around to setting up a second screen, that will let me... Uh, be able to avoid this sort of issue, or at least spot it, I'll be able to see what's happening. Because um, the mobile stream manager I'm using doesn't actually show. Alright, well that's, that's probably fine. They're probably just like infinite variations on the same thing. Don't need to watch that again. Well, that was definitely easier than dealing with them the other way. <laughs> Are you sure he doesn't spawn them? Oh, they respawn, don't they? Because I'm killing them with spells. Right. That explains that, at least. And there's the explosion that I mentioned. Polite of him to finally actually do it on this uh, attempt. That scream is the announcement that he's going to do that attack, but um, the attack comes really late in the animation comparatively. Still, uh, this should be the end of him after this next one. There we go, that was much more effective. He does actually have like two normal guy legs in there somewhere. And over here, since we kill Paladin Leroy, he drops his stuff, which is also useful to us. Anyway, after a little bit of tidying up, that's going to be the end of this stream for today. And I will, I don't know, figure out some kind of hate raid tool for next time, just in case, having established themselves, they do something. I mean, I'll be um, banning every single one of them, obviously, but... Uh, life be like that, I guess. So, let's put some uh, points somewhere. I could get a bit more intelligence, but at this point we don't really need any more. My brain's so heavy it's starting to fall over. So I'm going to put the rest of my points into dexterity, since we also have enough vitality and endurance to see us through the rest of the game. Because dexter dexter there, 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 there. dexterity does actually improve uh, your casting speed, which will be useful. Yeah, see, he's the first skeleton. He's the same kind of thing that uh, Gwyn is, or was, I reckon. Right, let's jump back to Firelink Shrine. And that is going to be all from me for today. Thank you so much for watching. Um, and go check out my YouTube channel if you haven't already, although I'm sure you have. And I stream three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 7pm UK time. Thank you so much to all my Patreon subscribers.